Drew was going off on a rant there for a bit, and then he just kind of disappeared. So what the, what the hell happened with that guy? got a special guest for you the one the only the grand poobah Aww. of the number one fan site on the internet daily norseman mr christopher gates yeah. how are you doing chris uh, gentlemen i am doing outstanding after watching uh this football team finally put together uh, at least a semi-complete football game i guess the uh, the middle two quarters I could have done without, but uh, the rest of it was pretty great. So, yeah, we're, uh, I think we got to be pretty happy here today. Yes, we are. What up, Chris Gates? Christopher Gates is here, man. You know what? We bounce back after two losses. We got to lit up David Stefano. And to top it all off, on top of that beautiful Aldrich Robinson touchdown, we get Mr. Christopher Gates in the house <laughs> here today, man. This is just a fantastic day. Feeling good today. I, I am just happy to be here, folks. That's, uh, that's <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> you're, used to, you're used to big introductions being the grand poobah and all. I, I can't even spell poobah. I don't even know what <laughs> one of those is. It's like, a, like part of the, I'm part of the Royal Order of Water Buffalo now or, or something like that. Yeah, we're it's getting to that of, hat. Kind of one Fred Flintstone has. I could, I, I would, I would wear it if you got it for me. But uh, yeah, I don't have one, unfortunately. Did I just watch the Vikings get three touchdowns to start a game on three successive drives? Did I just see that? You did. I hope so, because that's what I saw. Shit. Man, I've been yes. waiting, waiting for that for a long time. The debut of Kevin Stefanski, just superb. Now there was the going to sleep in the second and third quarter, but the fourth quarter made up. Yes, yes, I was, I was really happy to see. Well, it's, you know, the last eight quarters, we've only had managed to make, to get 17 points. So to make 21 points, I think, in one quarter is pretty much a step in the right direction. I was happy with it all. I'm just happy to get the win and have stuff to cheer about. I mean, the last two weeks, there's been nothing to cheer for. Today, there's a lot to cheer for. Cooker was on fire. We ran the ball really well. Uh, we could have beat him even worse if we didn't have the untimely penalties, but shit. We rolled up 41 points today. That's oh. a season high. Is that is that right? Season high? Wait, ho hold, hold up a second. I, I just got word that Ryan Tannehill just got sacked on the way to the team bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, make, that makes 10 for the Vikings this <laughs> afternoon. So that was, uh, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> no, I, but Drew, Drew and I were talking about this before we get before we kind of got started. And, you know, I, I think Vikings fans everywhere, uh, you know, the mood swings for Vikings fans, I know, are generally pretty <coughs> significant. You know, we're rolling along 21 to nothing, and, you know, then all of a sudden there's the pick six, and I think everybody in Vikings fandom just simultaneously went, Christ, here we go again. <laughs> and then it was, then the, yeah. then the first play of the third quarter, 75 yard touchdown run, and all of a sudden it's a four point game, and we're like, oh, it, it's just going to get worse. And then right. the Vikings showed up, and yeah, the, the, from, from the 75-yard run onto the rest of the game, it was all Vikings. The Dolphins didn't accomplish anything after that one play. Yeah, how about that defense after that run? It seems like they just they just flipped the switch. I mean, if they'd been playing like that, three quarters of the game would have had 20 sacks. It was amazing. They were there. I don't know. It was uh, it was a schizo Viking game. Is what you know. You can't get used to how the Vikings are ever going to play. They don't have an identity. Their identity is just to get all over the road and see how it comes out. But the defense <laughs> stepped it up there, and and it was uh, it was a nice win. It was really nice. Well, I saw, right, the first batch of planned plays obviously worked 
because we went out 21 to nothing. Stefanski looked like a genius. There was a good mix, I think, at the end of the half. It was 101 yards passing, 100 yards rushing. We had an even split. The rushing was effective. And, yes, Dr. Eric Eager, I know the philosophy over the value of the pass over the run, but the proper mix makes for winning. And in this time it did. But then we get into that second and third quarter and the Vikings sort of faded away to where are they? But in the fourth quarter, you saw adjustments that needed to be made and they were made. And that is so refreshing. Chris, hey, Chris, let me ask, what's your take on Cousins at this juncture of the season? I mean, we've seen quite a bit of them now. We're coming down on the tail end of the regular season. Uh, what I've never talked to you or got your opinion on what you think thus far of, of, of Cousins. What, well, I mean, what's your take? Cousins, Cousins kind of is what he is, I guess. I mean, he he's not the elite, you know, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers level quarterback. But you know he he's in that solidly in that next group I think and he's he's really streaky. Right. I mean you're gonna see good play, good play, good play, great play, and then you're gonna see just what the hell were you thinking on that pass? And then it's gonna be good play, good play, good play. And you know I know people are gonna harp on oh the the eighty four million dollars or whatever, but you know I'm not sure what other options the Vikings had uh, right. when they when they gave him that because, you know, they weren't going to bring back Keenum. I mean, Bradford's not even in the league anymore. He wasn't a, he wasn't an option. Uh, I know everybody loved Teddy Bridgewater, but they didn't bring him back either. But, uh, you know, Cousins is the quarterback for this team this year and for at least the next two years after that. And, you know, if, if the offensive line can step up its level of performance, you know, it did today a little bit, but, uh, you know, they still have their issues. But I, I think – like I said, Cousins is never going to be confused with the elite quarterbacks or anything like that, but uh, he's solidly in the in the level like just below the elite quarterbacks, I think. I mean, he's not he's not a complete flop or anything like that, but he's So he's, he's good he's enough not, to win the Lombardi, is what you're saying. I I I certainly think he's good enough to to win a Lombardi trophy. I mean, if you look at some of the guys that have won Super Bowls over the years, I mean, Joe Flacco has a Super Bowl ring. I mean, because sure. he had all the parts around him to to make that happen. And you know, we you guys have talked about it extensively. And you know, th this team has the skill position players. They have the defense, but the offensive line is just so far behind. Uh, right. the rest of this roster in terms of talent. And that really hampers uh, everything you can do. Now we saw that against Miami today and Miami's defense is not good. They're bottom of the league. Just oh. about every category. I mean, it's, it was still awesome to see it happen, but you know, if, it remains to be seen what happens when, you know, we got Chicago again in week 17, whether or not the right. game actually means anything to them at that point, we'll see. But you know, it, Teams like the Vikings should be able to exploit bad defenses the way they did with Miami today, and that's really what happened. All right, that, that's you know I'm starting to think that even if we had the best offensive line in the league, and I agree with everything you said about Cousins, but I'm starting to feel even if we had the best offensive line in the league, he's still going to have these huge mistakes, these turnovers, because that's kind of what he's always been. Um, yeah, I, I think I saw someone say something about during the game, he now leads the National Football League in turnovers between interceptions and fumbles. And they're they're not just, you know, meaningless interceptions. I mean, we've had at least three pick sixes that I can think six, of. And Did we just lose Drew? Uh, he froze up on me. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure where he went. I think we just lost Drew. Yeah, he's kind of frozen there. He was pissed no. off. Maybe that's <laughs> no, I agree. Kirk Cousins has led the league in turnovers and that awful pick six. I saw that from a mile away. That was horrible. It shouldn't have been done. But no. we recovered. The Vikings defense recovered, thankfully. They did, and you know, we were talking, Drew and I beforehand, and that that was 
I, I think that's the worst throw Cousins has made this season. I know people want to talk about last week with the, the backwards pass to, to Murray. Or at least that pass went to his own guy, and he could, like, do something with it. But that I don't know what he was seeing on that pass. I don't know where he was throwing the ball, but it went right to – Minka Fitzpatrick, and there was nobody between him and the end zone. And yeah, like I said, it's just where you throw your hands up and you're like, ah, oh, what the hell you were doing there, Big Doug? No, it was obvious. It was obvious, obvious beyond belief that, you know, he turned around, the defense could read it, I could read it. It was, unfortunately, that's the way it was. But he did recover, he did go into the fourth quarter. He did throw some key passes. Robes, Robinson, I keep wanting to say Robinson. <laughs> Robinson caught a beautiful one. That There's four TDs to different individuals this this week, and it just uh, it was awesome. Now, and, and that throw to Robinson is one of those throws where you look at Kirk Cousins and you say, hey, he, he can do this. He's Because that was a hell of a throw. I mean, he put it right where Robinson could get it. Robinson was clear of the receiver. He didn't throw it behind him. He didn't overthrow him. It was a perfectly thrown ball. And you, if Kirk Cousins threw more passes like that, I don't think people would be as hard on him as they are. But you know, like I said, that $84 million and people are going to expect perfection on every throw. I mean, they're not going to get it, but they're going to expect it. But, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, he, they're going to the, They're going to expect the Aaron Rodgers type performance. And he doesn't give that because he'll give 75, 80, 90% good decisions, good throws. But it's that last little bit that he makes. What in the world are you thinking type throws or plays that just drives you crazy? And all, all quarterbacks make bad decisions. It's part of being, it's part of the position and what they need to do and whatnot. But it just seems like Cousins bad decisions are really bad decisions. Not like marginally bad decisions. It's super awful bad decisions that lead to touchdowns for the other team. And that, that's 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 where people will get angry with him. And I, I mean that's understandable, but you know, you're I think you're gonna get a lot more good out of Kirk Cousins and you're gonna get bad. <laughs> oh, I concur. Um and if you weigh that enough and then if you put a good defensive play enough, we can go on a run. And like the Baltimore Ravens, we talked about Flacco earlier, like the Baltimore Ravens in 2012, you ditched, got rid of their offensive coordinator, put a new one in. Flacco got on a run. Hopefully the same case will happen here and Cousins will get on a run and along with the defense, and hopefully we have the same results in a one Super Bowl. We're one game closer to that. We certainly are. We uh, we still control uh, our own destiny for the playoffs as long as we keep winning. Uh, we stay in that uh, that number six spot. Um, didn't get any help from the Jaguars today because I think the uh, the Redskins beat the Jaguars, so they are still in it. Uh, the other two games that uh, potentially affect that are the uh, the Sunday night game uh, between the Rams and the Eagles and the uh, the Monday night game with the uh, the Panthers and the Saints. Uh, a loss for uh, Carolina or Philadelphia is going to pretty much eliminate them, I think. But, uh, you know, the important thing is that the, the Vikings needed to win their game, and that's what they got. And if they continue doing it, nobody can pass them for that sixth spot. So, yeah, hopefully that'll continue happening. I agree. Now, on unfortunate news, Green Bay screwed it up again against <laughs> Chicago, and Chicago beating Green Bay clinched the division, so the division is out of the picture for the Vikings, but we can still secure ourselves in the playoffs, and if we do that as a wild card, most likely we'll go to either Chicago or Dallas. Dallas was getting beat handily today, and hopefully it is Dallas. I I would 
probably much rather play Dallas than Chicago. I mean, we've seen Chicago and Soldier Field in January is going to be a mess. I mean, it's a mess on its best day anyway, but by the time January rolls around and the below freezing temperatures and the snow and just getting torn up all the time, I mean, obviously, once you make it to the playoffs, anything can happen. But, you know, given the choice, I think Vikings fans would obviously like to see uh, – like to see Dallas. However, I don't know how much of a chance there is that they're actually going to pass Chicago because if they lost today, I believe that would put them two games behind the Bears uh, for the third spot with uh, two games to go. So I think Dallas is more than likely going to be the fourth seed. And unless Seattle falls apart, we're not going to jump over them. They'll, so they would be the five. And I think we stay in the sixth spot and we wind up in uh, Chicago anyway. That is what it's looking like. Um, hopefully not, but at that point, hopefully Stefanski's got his groove on, mm-hmm. right? It's got his roll on as I'm wearing an old Culpepper <laughs> jersey, and we can take that defense and the offense and kick some royal butt, even though we're going against that outstanding defense of the Chicago Bears. Much to my sister Chagrin, who's a Bears fan, <laughs> I hope we whoop their butts at some point in time. Um, but we'll see. Since we have you on for the very first time, <laughs> right? Good morning, Gallahorn has been a part of Daily Norseman as well as climbing the pocket for a while. Daily Norseman has been around since when? I know it's well over a decade. What we're looking uh, at 2004, 2002, somewhere in there? Uh, the, the first season was 2006 uh, for us, actually. Okay. So, yeah, the, uh, the Brad Childress era started. Uh, yeah. But we, we would rather forget the Brad Childress era, but the, uh, the, da- the Daily Norseman era is still uh, going on relatively strong. But, yeah, 2006 was the, uh, was the first season for us. What made you start the Daily Norseman? Well, uh, I'll be honest. I got to give credit to the uh, the Bears uh, SB Nation site, the uh, the folks over at Windy City Gridiron. Uh, I was just kind of bumming around one day looking for football stuff and came across their site, and you know, I noticed they didn't have a site for the Vikings, and said, "No, I I could probably do this if they wanted me to." So uh, I, I sent the higher ups over there an email and sent them some writing samples, and yeah, like thir- thirteen seasons later. Uh, we're still here, so they they haven't uh, they haven't fired me yet, which is which is nice of them. <laughs> well, I know I started out blogging, but you produce more articles in a short period of time than I ever did. <laughs> I mean, the most I ever did was about three a day, but you mm-hmm. produce even more than that. How do you do that? I I. I really don't know. I mean, stuff happens and I write about it and it, it's kind of, it's difficult to explain the process. I mean, there are lots of people that do uh, kind of the same thing, but yeah, it, like I said, it it's just our responsibility that when news happens with this team, we, uh, we get it out there as fast as we can so that people can react to it, whether it's me or Ted or Eric or whoever else uh, is ready and available to write about a particular thing. And yeah, we, uh, we try to get stuff out there for, uh, for the readers. Cause I mean, obviously without the readers, there's no us and you know, yeah. I mean, that's, that's just how it goes basically. Well, there has been some outstanding writers and video guys that have gone <laughs> on to bigger and better things and on to different places, starting at daily Norseman. I've mm-hmm. always appreciated that you've let me write since 2006. Yep. Um, but and that, that's kind of that's kind of the beauty of the uh, the platform that we write on because we have the uh, the section where you know, like you said, anybody can come along and do like a post. It, it's kind of message board like, but not. You know, it's kind of the same idea. I mean, you can come in, you can post your thoughts, post your ideas, and everyone can react to your thoughts and that. It's not just the same few writers dominating everything. I mean, we can anybody that wants to log in and start up an account can write, and 
know, like you said, we get some people such as yourself that uh, we move on to the, the front page of the site and yeah, it's a, it's really a community thing and it has been for, you know, as long as we've been uh, up and running. Well, I like the fact that it's been independent. It's yeah. not associated with any of the big names you've been able to speak or I've been able to speak whatever I've wanted to. There's been no mm -hmm. restrictions, right? If I've wanted to criticize Childress back in the day when I was running a loose locker room, that was fine. If I wanted to criticize today, right, with Filippo and his play calling, I can criticize Filippo and his play calling. But I'm not the only one. Every single writer along the line has been able to do that. And I guarantee you, at least for me, I appreciate that. Well, thank you. And like you said, we if everybody thinks the same thing all the time, I mean, it gets kind of boring, you know? I mean, and like, like you said, we're, we're not, I mean, we're not like the Star Tribune or the Pioneer Press where we have to worry about, you know, well, if we say this, we might lose our access to such and such. We're, we're, we're fans. And as fans, you know, we get happy with things. We get angry about things. And this is the outlet to express either your happiness or your anger, your disappointment. And, you know, we, we have people that have been commenting on the site regularly for years. And it, it's really got a community feel to it. And, yeah, I mean, that that's what we've always wanted to be because, I mean, you know, a, a few weeks ago after one of the games, we had one of our writers uh, post something about how they thought Mike Zimmer should be on the hot seat. Now, do I think Mike Zimmer should be on the hot seat? No, that that's not my opinion, but that was that writer's opinion, and he had the opportunity to express that, and the, the people in the comments got the opportunity to disagree with that. And, you know, that's the way it should be because you're... Or agree. Yeah, if, if they agree as well, but... You know, you're not going to get anywhere, like I said, if everyone thinks the same way about everything all the time. And it opens up the different perspectives on the team to uh, to folks. And, yeah, it, it's it's pretty outstanding in that way, I think. I agree. I think it's a wonderful community site for Vikings fans everywhere. And if they don't know, go to DailyNorseman.com and you will find a wide variety of of providers and creators that are talking about what we love, our beloved team, the Minnesota Vikings. Hey, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll win six more games in a row and we'll <laughs> talking about the legend. But until then, to wrap this up, have you got anything left to say or want to say there, Chris, to everybody? Um. I, I just want to say thanks to people that come to the uh, the site every day, every week, however frequently it is, to get their uh, Vikings news and perspectives. Uh, like I said earlier, without the uh, the readers and without the community, uh, there's no site, and uh, we wouldn't want there to be no site. So uh, we we appreciate everyone that uh, continues to uh, to make us part of their Vikings routine and. You know, like you said, maybe we can win uh, six games in a row here uh, the rest of the way, but uh, it's got to start with winning the next one at uh, Detroit next Sunday. I mean, we whooped that team once already this season, and Matthew Stafford is probably still sore from uh, from that <laughs> game. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can get a repeat performance because, like I said, if, if this team keeps winning, nobody can push them out of that playoff spot. So, yeah, it, it's, all about, uh, it's all about next week in Detroit. Damn straight. And the Vikings go, they charge, they row those boats, they get the win. It's playoffs again, once again, baby, mm -hmm. under Zimmer. And we can't beat that with a stick. We didn't get that with Childress. We didn't get that with Tice. We haven't had that since Denny Green. So at least we have the best opportunity now and the Vikings have it within their own hands to control their destiny mm -hmm. to get there. Any last things to say? Uh, nothing I can think of. I'm just happy that we won and you know, it, it always makes for a better Monday when the Vikings went on Sunday. So uh, 
So yeah, that, that's about all I've got from here, man. Absolutely, baby. Vikings win. Vikings win. Mondays are great. Absolutely. And uh, since, since Drew, I don't know what happened to here. Uh, what happened to him here? I will uh, jump in for him and express this by. Uh, I believe the phrase he uses is a uh, "meow meow Viking cow." <laughs> <laughs> and I don't I don't think it can be said any better than that. Awesome, baby, awesome. <laughs> Skull Viking! DMC and Iran.